Welcome back to the show and a major development for Africa today with a formal launch of the new payment and settlement system known as the PAPSS. For a deep dive conversation on this is the Managing Director and Regional Executive of Ecobank Nigeria, Patrick Akiwoto, and is live with me here in our Lagos studios. Many thanks for making the time this evening. Quite a very big day. Ecobank's one of the banks or partners for this particular program, so no other person better than to discuss this with. Uh, what is the rationale behind the setting up of the PAPSS system in the, in the first instance? Thank you, Boasin. Uh, like you said, great day for Africa. Really great day for Africa. We've been talking about intra-Africa trade as critical to uh, allowing Africans to take their destiny in their hands, create employment, generate wealth, and AFTCA was launched, uh, became operational last year. The payment infrastructure and efficient payment system is a critical enabler mm. for trade. And that's why you see, anytime you hear trade, you hear payment. Every time you hear payment, you hear trade. Because payment delivers the value that is contained in a trade transaction. Mm. Uh, therefore, for Africa, uh, today, Perhaps a Pan-African payment settlement system is critical because now we have a backbone through which all the countries in Africa, 55 of them, are able to actualize the transactions that will be done within the free trade area called Africa. One market, instant payment, reduction of costs. Africa pays about $5 billion in costs for trade transactions today because the correspondent and settlement banks are outside Africa. So you use third currency, either the US dollar or euro or the today uh, the Chinese one. Uh, now we're able to, using this platform, connect all banks. All the central banks are active in this. The African Union gave it Authority in 2019, this is promoted by Afrexim, is supported by the Pan-African Bank, Ecobank. Africa is here to do real business. Interesting, the rationale behind this, and for you with all your years of experience in the banking sector, understand trade and money, uh, yeah. they go together, they're like twins. But the, the payment system, how was it designed really? Because again, the Afrexim Bank was talking about it. And everyone was saying, look, how will the EFCFTA goes up? Yes, we have infrastructure, we have a lot of challenges. But again, payment, 54 countries in Africa, I think about 30 or 40 odd currencies we all use. 42 currencies. 42 currencies. Right. And so one must congratulate Afrexim. I mean, um, uh, Professor Rama and his team, Mike Ogbalu and all of them involved in this, one must congratulate them because they actually stepped forward and leveraging on the instrument of Afrexim itself, which is about... Africa trade and facilitating trade in Africa decided to operationalize a payment infrastructure. So they put together the scheme rules, the bylaws, uh, a governing structure, a Pan-African uh, uh, payment council uh, of which today you have the chairman uh, of the PAPS governing council. It's our own governor of our central bank, uh, uh, Dr. Godwin Emefile. Uh, so they put that together, put together a management structure, and then invited core participants, starting with a pilot within West Africa, Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, the Gambia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, leveraging through their central bank governors, connecting the national switches within those countries, and started to do a test run so that there is confidence that it is possible for you uh, to export from Nigeria, Adire, from Abeokuta, to, to people who want to do uh, a birthday or a big ceremony in Ghana and receive your payment instantly. Uh, of course, you In what currency? In your local currency. Uh, so the person paying from Ghana will pay in Ghana City. Uh, the exporter out of Abeokuta will receive the Naira value instantly, eliminating the need for a third currency, uh, removing delays for settlement. So you're able to do it instantly, strengthening our local currencies, providing employment for Africans, enabling Africa move into Africa trade from current 16%, about $70 billion, uh, to the range of 50-55% within the next three years. That is huge, because we could be talking of about $300 billion intra-Africa trade, which would be close to 15 
percent of Africa's GDP. Fantastic. Interesting about how the architecture works. In the case of Nigeria, you talk about those six central banks in those six countries. Right. Uh, in the case of Nigeria, that would be, uh, but that would be that would be NIBS, by the way, because uh, uh, NIBS is, is our own Nigerian interbank uh, uh, settlement uh, uh, system. Uh, but again, how do you get other operators and, and, and pilot banks into the system uh, to ensure that everybody can be on the same page? Because it's all digitalized, automat automated. Right. So Nigeria has a head start. Nigeria has NIBS. Uh, a number of other countries in Africa are not yet at the level of NIBS. But you have major uh, Pan-African banking entities that already connect all the players in different countries. Ecobank is an example. Yes. Today, we're able to reach any bank in Chad, in Niger, in Malawi, in Burkina Faso, because we already have a Pan-African switch, and we're connected with uh, PAPS. Uh, clearly, uh, we also supported with our own technical expertise, our experience. The whole idea is us. You supported the AFCFTA, the Afrexim Bank, and this Absolutely, pilot absolutely. We worked together with the Afrexim Bank in this, and you would have listened to the group CEO, of Ecobank at the IAME at today's opening in Ghana. Yes. Uh, of course, it's a journey that the founders of Africa has always looked at Africa as one market. Because before colonization, Africa was one market. You think of the cowrie for payment. There was no third currency. Uh, and all of a sudden, with colonization, before you can make a payment between Sierra Leone and Nigeria, then you first have to send it to London. And then somebody is making 165 pounds on a 10,000 pounds transaction and that is actually happening between Sierra Leone and Nigeria. I mean, that is horrendous because that's close to 2%. And then we talk of poverty in Africa. So this eliminates that. So the value so of the, that so in a year is 5 billion. The international banking system right. will, should be scratching their head right now that here goes, here goes uh, Patrick and the rest of his team mm -hmm. that are going to take some of their lunch. Well, the fact is Africa started civilization in, the, in a lot of ways. So we're just taking our rightful place in the global economy. We have a lot more to talk about on this when we return. Thank That's, you. Uh, uh, Patrick Akewoto, the regional executive at Ecobank Nigeria. Inter-Africa trade, a very big day for African continent. Yeah, we thank you everyone for standing by on this conversation, a very important day for Africa as we saw the inauguration today of the <coughs> new Intra-Africa Payment and Settlement System, the PAPSS in Accra, Ghana. A very big day, big name, of course Nigeria, part of this uh, important day. The Managing Director and the Regional Executive of uh, Ecobank Nigeria, Ecobank Group of course, being part of the design and the test run and the flotation of this particular uh, uh, if, uh, uh, system. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick Akiwata, for standing by. We're having conversation in just before the break about how much we we're, we're, uh, we're giving out to the international banking system and others, right. whether they are airlines, well, whatever we're doing, because we don't have a Pan-African system that can cross our Ghana to city, to Liberian dollar, to the Kwacha, to whatever other currencies, the Bera. Now this is the day that we can say 2022 we go live. All right. On a pilot basis. Actually, you said how much does it cost us? I said it is $5 billion in direct costs. There are other costs. Because we're talking of employment. We're talking of wealth creation. Think of an SME in Nigeria that is able to prepare uh, services for an, an SME in Burkina Faso. For every $1,000 transaction, about $20 is already earned somewhere in Paris and $20 somewhere in London because you need to cross uh, between those two because you're talking of in Anglo uh, to Franco uh, economy. Of course, Ecobank has done quite some work over the years bridging that, but Ecobank is one player. We're talking of a common platform for the entire continent right now. We're saying, for instance, in aviation, we have Pan-African airlines. Why are they struggling all the time? We have international airlines coming into Africa. Why is it that Africa is indebted in terms of dollar remittances, pound sterling, euro remittances, when the travel is actually happening within Africa, why are we settling in a third currency? So if you want to come from Kenya to Nigeria, pay your Kenya shillings to your travel agent, 
and the airline that is carrying you from Nigeria, hopefully Airpiece, yes. will receive the Naira value instantly. Into a Nigerian into, into, local into, account. So a local account. account. So in that way, we strengthen both our local currencies. We begin the journey for a common monetary union across Africa. Mm. One continent, one market, one set of rules. Mm. Ability for better monetary policy. Transparency in terms of flows. Mm. Eliminate money laundering and all those other issues that happens because you can't trace an account somewhere in one island, somewhere in Europe in Bahamas, or in the Bahamas or whatever. Or whatever. Yes. Within Africa, all our central banks together, all our core financial institutions together, mm. riding and sharing, collaborating. Mm. We also connected the EcoBank uh, uh, Pan-African switch. Mm. We know that the South African switch is being connected. We know Ken switch is being connected. We all come together on the PAPS platform. Create one market for Africa. Take Africa to the next level. Take our destiny in our yes. hands. The same thing China did with Union Pay. If you understand, that's what they did. And they basically stayed out of using Visa or MasterCard. They just used payments within their continent. Africa has that opportunity now. Thanks to Afrexim, thanks to the likes of EcoBank, the central banks, and all of us that are really committed to letting Africa take its rightful position. Twelve commercial banks are said to be already connected. Absolutely. And Michael Bellu, uh, the, the managing director and CEO of PAPS, as uh, Pap says, look, in that particular soundbite, and say, look, this uh, system does not override the existing payment systems like the NIPs we have in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but it's just going to support it. How will that work? It is about collaboration. So now we're talking of a common highway for everybody. A super highway. A super highway for everybody. And Mike, we... Proudly, he is a product of EcoBank. Of and of Nigeria. And of Nigeria. In fact, when you say Nigeria, WTODG is Nigerian, ADB, AFDB president is Nigerian, Afrexim president is Nigerian, uh, the chairman governing council of PAPS is our central bank governor, Nigerian, the MD CEO of PAPS is Mike Ogbalu, Nigerian, MD of EcoBank Group across the three countries is Adia AME, Nigerian. MD of AFC is Samaila, Nigerian. Mm. This is the time for Nigeria. This is the time for Africa. Uh, and, and the, and the Under Secretary General at the United Nations. Yes, Amin Amu Amin Amu Amin Amu 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 just, just, just got, got uh, uh, re-elected. Absolutely. But again, so you look at 12 banks, and he says this will be expanded All right. across the rest of the continent. Uh, how will this be done? How quickly do you think we should do it? I think, uh, I mean, as someone who has participated in payment technology, uh, across Africa. This is doable this year. It is doable. What you do is you use aggregators. So if you look at what NIBS did to be able to reach all participants, fintechs, in, uh, in, in, in Nigeria, Nigeria. Yes. all those fintechs, those community banks, the microfinance entities, they are carried by other players, either by a bank or uh, a, P, a, P, a PTSP, yeah. Those are aggregators, and they aggregate and come to the superhighway. The same thing for Africa. Each country has aggregators. I can say easily, EcoBank is an aggregator in Liberia. It's an aggregator in Burkina Faso. It's an aggregator in Niger. EcoBank Connecting brings all those participants straight into PAPS. The same thing you have in East Africa. Equity Bank is an aggregator. You connect that. You carry all the entire artery and veins and all the distribution network that is carried on that. That means that African banks become the correspondent and settlement banks for trade within Africa. Instead which of is, using instead correspondent of, banks in Europe, in you Paris, know the names. In, in I don't want to advertise them here. <laughs> I'm African. I'm ready. Africa is ready. Let's go for it. Interesting that now we need to uh, do a lot more. What do you think are the next most important steps for us to, to take? Okay, we need to now bring all the stakeholders on board. The chambers of commerce are absolutely critical. Mm. Uh, in a lot of countries, they do uh, aggregate the MSMEs. They have the exporter groups. You have the key industry sectors that lend themselves to Pan-African trade. For example, the East Not, African Community. Absolutely. The East African Business Council. Absolutely. The South African SABC. SABC. Yes. In ECOWAS here, you have the West Africa Chambers of Commerce. Yes. Uh, and all that we need now to go through helping them see the practical opportunity. Bring the test pilot to them.
Because they, not because, just because, they, because they are already organized. Yes. Let, it, let them test it and use it. And all their members will be sold. Each of us that already have those relationships have a responsibility. Those 12 banks, yes. Echo Bank and the other 11 banks, we have a responsibility. Take this message that, look, for you to do a transaction from Tanzania to Ghana, uh, from Nigeria to uh, Chad, you don't need to start looking for one international foreign bank. The rules for the trade is known by the regulatory authority. The payment capability is here. And with technology, this is the advantage of COVID. A lot of our customers now are able to log in online on either internet platform or a mobile platform yeah. and do their transactions. Yeah. Perhaps we just work the way NIBS has been working behind in Nigeria. and making it possible to pay from um, Kavanchan to uh, Ugeli instantly without waiting for 21 clearing days. Today is instant. When yes. I joined banking, it was 21 clearing days for upcountry clearing. <laughs> but then today, at the touch of button, the payment is instant. That's the way PAPS will work. And Afrexim is putting together a $3 billion overdraft line to support the, that, that system. That the system. PAPS, yes. And $8 billion trade line for the participating banks, which also ensures that you're able to grant better credit to the manufacturers, the exporters. So in other words, it's not, that, it's, it's not just a system not backed with liquidity. It's a system backed with liquidity. Eight billion dollars. And it's a system backed with governance and the support of the central banks. All the key parties are already engaged. We now need to take it to the users. And we need to keep pumping the statistics, showing the value, encouraging the Nollywood expert that your market across Africa, now you receive your money instantly. It's a big opportunity for us in Nigeria. But if anyone wants to opt for dollars? Why would you like to do that? If you want to do That's that, it. yes, but it's out of your choice. Not by compulsion, on which, the, today, the which today is why the price is always skewed in favor of the dollar. Because it's a compulsion. You don't have a choice. Now that you have a choice, the dollar will need to respect the value of the productive of, capacity of the of current of local currencies. Absolutely. Yes. The same thing China did to global so the strength of So the strength of the dollar technically across the African continent was because it's a compulsion currency. Absolutely. You can't, you, you can't go around it. So if they decide that there's going to be scarcity, yes. very quickly, then we're all sweating. They, we, then we're all sweating. Now, we will compare on the basis of the value of the production on our continent versus the production outside. Patrick Akko, what's on, Managing Director and Regional Executive, you need a, 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 a cold glass of wine to celebrate. It will be palm uh, wine. It will be palm wine. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, Africa it's going to be palm for Africa. Wine, made in Nigeria and paid for made in Ghana. Made in Ghana, actually. Made, and, 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 and paid for and, from and Ghana. Paid for, and paid for in Ghana. I don't, mind this, I don't mind the cities. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Success. Congratulations to everyone uh, on the African continent. Have a great evening. Wish everyone all the best. <laughs>